I think chefs might be some of the professions that I'm most afraid of. Hi, I have a weird question for you. I have a weird question for you. I had a really weird question for you. I don't know how to like ask this. So I'm on a cross country road trip and I'm trying to find a really cool restaurant to hopefully maybe work in the kitchen for like a few minutes. So gosh, that really sucked. Felt like such an idiot. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to work in the kitchen of one of the best restaurants in America? If I'm being honest, this is something that's been on my bucket list for a really long time. I don't know if it's because I'm such a huge fan of Intensity, Where's the lamb sauce? or if it's because I just started to grow in my love for cooking, or if it's because in my family, we grew up ordering water at restaurants to not spend the extra money that a soda would cost. So peeling back the curtain of a luxurious, high-class New York Times best restaurant of 2022 experience and getting to work among the best of the best seems like most of the worthwhile things in life equally out of my comfort zone and something I've been dying to try. Even if I end up just getting rejected, which reminds me, let me introduce myself. This is me. I'm sorry, I had to wait. Hello everybody, my name is Meredith and welcome or welcome back to 23 Days of Rejection, where I'm driving across the country from Florida to California, purposefully seeking out rejection in hopes of desensitizing myself to it. Every day I have to get rejected one more time than the day before. So once on day one, twice on day two, and 11 times on day 11, which is today. And I came all the way up here with this beautiful lake and this beautiful view of the city to tell you guys that I'm in Austin, Texas. Austin is a city known for its murals, its river, its film festivals, its live music, and some of the best restaurants in America are right here in the Austin city limits. So this is just an amazing city overall for people who love food, including chefs. Hey. To remind you guys, because today's 11, I need 11 rejections. So to go to 11 restaurants, I need 11 people to tell me no, or I need to get a yes. Whichever one comes first. I don't know how to like ask this. I also still feel pretty numb from yesterday. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Yesterday while I was filming this intro, somebody actually broke into my car. They had taken my laptop, my hard drive with all of my footage, my passport, my wallet, basically everything that was important to me. But through the magic of the Find My App and a pure miracle of God, I went up the road and ended up finding every single thing that was stolen from me just dumped on the sidewalk. The whole story is long and dramatic and probably deserves its own video, but all you need to know is that I'm okay, my car's gonna be okay, and I actually uncovered some real life footage of me deciding to continue on with this challenge the next day. Duncan! Oh, no! Duncan, no! Just kidding, it was more like this. Okay, okay, fine. What actually happened is I went through the car wash the next morning immediately after picking up my car from the glass repair shop, which actually made me feel so much better mentally. Bought myself my comfort drink and repeated a mantra I've had to say way too much this year. No question about it, I am ready to get hurt again. Which brings us back to... Also, still feel pretty numb from yesterday. So you can't get a Michelin star in Texas. It's only available in three states in the United States, but this is technically the Michelin star experience. Ugh. Okay, I see it. It's like unmarked. Do you see that? It's not marked. I don't know how to like ask this. What do I ask? Can I work in your kitchen? Another? Could I help make something in your kitchen? Can I learn how to make something? I feel like that's okay to ask. I do feel nauseous a little bit. It's just gonna get worse the more that I stand outside and like don't go in, so. Oh, yeah. Are you guys closed for an event? Are you guys closed? Oh, okay. I'm on a cross country road trip and I'm trying to find a place in Austin where I could maybe learn how to work in the kitchen or like learn how to cook something for a few minutes. That would not be here unfortunately. Okay, yeah. I don't Okay, cool, thank you so much. Gosh, that really sucked. I felt like such an idiot. <sighs> and that's like the point. 
It's like, I feel so bad every time. And I'm like, that's the point. It's not supposed to be easy. <sighs> That was also just like a really nice place inside and I walked in right as these three guys in their 30s or 40s were ordering these cocktails and oh, it was so awkward to stand there. So many of these videos I just feel so out of place like I just so don't belong. I've noticed that it makes me feel more comfortable in places that I don't belong in but it still is just like a really crazy thing to continually do. So there's a restaurant right next to it that's also on my list that I'm just gonna get out of the way and maybe it'll be as easy as that last one was where I just walk in, he says no and I keep going. Hi. I have a, a weird question for you. I'm trying to see if I can work in the kitchen of a nice restaurant in Austin. Do you think that might be possible? Okay. Do you have any restaurants that you would recommend? That she said not in this area, so kind of why I wanted to start here, to be honest. I'm also working on a bit of a time crunch. I just did the math and I have three and a half hours, go to nine more. I have about 20 minutes per rejection to like drive, park, go and get rejected and like go to the next one. So this might be like a long three and a half hours. So this next restaurant was on the New York Times list of best restaurants in 2022. I think chefs might be some of the professions that I'm most afraid of. I feel like they're so intense. I'm really hoping these people are cool. Hi there. How are you guys? I have a weird question for you. So, I'm trying to find a really cool restaurant in Austin to hopefully maybe work in the kitchen for like a few minutes. Or... Wait, what? Have you worked in a kitchen before? No. You've never worked in a kitchen? Yeah. Okay, cool. I will tell you this. Uh, yeah. If you did want to work in the kitchen, we'll call it a stage. And it's something you would not be allowed to record while you're in yes. the kitchen. Okay. As far as like when you're sitting down, you're allowed to record whatever you want. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the kitchen, we are all about stages. We always accommodate. Okay. But it's, it's one of those things that they're going to want your resume. When exactly would you be trying to do that? Um... I was planning to leave town to San Antonio tonight. Cool. I probably couldn't convince Chef to do it tonight. Okay. Two minutes later, I'm following Eddie, the manager I was just talking with, through the restaurant into the kitchen. And if I felt out of place before, I felt it even more now. The whole kitchen erupts in applause as Eddie introduces me to Chef. And I realized standing in front of Chef, explaining how I'm seeking out rejection across America, how completely out of my league I am. The whole time Chef is moving around, calling out orders, multitasking, and he finally looks up to ask me one question. I'm speechless right now. I just met Chef. He was like, I don't know what would help for me to reject you or to say yes. And I was like, please say yes. So the guy beside me said, do you have closed sewed shoes? You have like a short sleeve shirt. So I'm coming out to my car and I'm gonna go work in a kitchen. Oh my God. My excitement lasted for about 60 seconds before the nerves of what I was getting myself into finally hit. Because after Eddie brought me around back to give me an apron and have me enter through the employee entrance, I started learning how to prep shrimp and I kept holding my breath, expecting this to happen at any moment. Hey, shut up! It's getting low. Where's the lamb sauce? But what did happen was the complete opposite. The whole atmosphere of the kitchen was safe and energetic and everyone immediately started going out of their way to teach me things. And soon, Chef even ended up giving me permission to use my camera, though I barely wanted to touch it during the next five hours. So let me start introducing you to everyone. This is Eddie, Chef. Everyone say what one. What one. After peeling shrimp, Chef let me join him in the center of it all where I got to meet Mikey, Colin, Barry, the line cooks who explained to me in excruciating detail what everything was made of and who were so patient with me as I tried to catch on and contribute. Random dishes kept appearing out of nowhere for me to try and one of my many favorite moments was when I told Chef I had never had an oyster before and Eddie says, on it, and starts preparing me one. I then helped prep plantain chips with Chef Chip Daddy, which is her actual nickname, and learned that Chef has a secret handshake with every single one of the staff. Despite cracking a few jokes, I was so tense for the first few hours that Chef had to keep reminding me that he wasn't like the chefs I've seen on TV. And so I soon started to relax a little bit and even join in when Chef gave an order and everyone coursed in with yes. 
Later, Chef sent me off to Shadow David, the lead server, and I got to experience the front of house for the next few hours, which honestly was just as magical. I heard a rumor that sometimes guests will hug their server at the end of their dinner like they've developed a rare friendship, and after an hour, that made total sense to me. Seeing the whole guest experience paired with what I had just seen in the kitchen painted me the perfect picture of why this is one of the best of the best. The lead bartender, Riley, even taught me how to make a drink behind bar, and a few times I was tested by having to deliver and name food to the right table and the right seat. The funniest thing for me was when I was shadowing David, he told me to go up to a couple at the bar, deliver a drink for them, and tell them about my road trip and rejection therapy challenge. They were so entertained by the idea, they were like, we have to get a video of this, and took my phone to film this. It's like not being afraid of getting rejected. Who cares? It's just a no. There will be a yes one day. And now we're drinking wine. Nothing that I could possibly say in this YouTube video will ever do my experience justice, but this is a really special place. And by the end of the night, I had 14 new friends, was invited to get drinks with everyone, and even had my own handshake with Chef. I started to realize that this journey is becoming more than just getting over my fear of rejection, but that this moment was proof that if you're willing to get through a couple of awkward conversations and a couple of no's, you never know what sort of fulfilling or life-changing experience may lie on the other side. Especially with the emotional whiplash of having my car broken into the day before and all of the fear that that stirred up, I can't thank Kanji enough for taking a chance on me because outside of maybe changing the course of my passion for cooking, not to be cheesy, but I think this experience might have altered my brain chemistry forever. If you're in the Austin area, I can't recommend the food, this atmosphere, or the people here enough. And I already have reservations in my calendar to come back. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in San Antonio.